Hello, peeps, <laughs> and welcome to an adventure today. It's uh, Tracy here, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher, and I have this great plan today to do the first of six lives, believe it or not, one a day from Monday till Saturday, and then I'm going to have a little Zoom session on Sunday. Unfortunately, my computer has, well, let's not get too talk, caught up in technical uh, terms, my computer is having a temper tantrum. Seriously, do not know what's wrong with it. It did not want to turn on. I figured it would use a reboot. Did not want to turn off. I've kind of got it going, but everything is just super laggy and it's just not working. So I gave up. So now we're in the dining room. This is not my, uh, here, here's a little bit of my history. Ooh, it's all on the wall. Um, so this is my dining room, not my little happy place craft room. And I've moved everything out here and I'm by hand holding my iPad. So... Let's hope we don't go ball Blair Witch Project with the shaking in the dark and all that. I'm going to see how well I can make this happen, which will probably make this shorter than it was maybe intended to be, but we'll see how it all goes. So really, here's what we got going. We have a promotion going right now called Start With Savings. And basically what you do is you get the starter kit, the Stampin' Up! starter kit, which is normally $135 flat rate for $100. Now the $135 flat rate is an amazing deal already. Making it $100 is even better. Like, that's amazing. Most people, though, have no idea what the starter kit is, and there's a lot of misconceptions about what the starter kit is. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time each day this week telling you about the starter kit or about what the starter kit means. It's basically what demos buy to get started, but you don't have to be a demonstrator like I am who's like trying to make this as a full-time business. You, it could be a part-time business, it could be for the discount, it could be for a one-time deal. So there's there's lots of, there's so many different combinations of things you can do. And I thought the easiest way to do this is each day I'm going to show you a little bit more. I'm going to tell you one more aspect of it. Today, this is what we're going to focus on. Savings. Because if nothing else, the starter kit is the best way to get the most craft supplies for the least amount of money. And there is no, no obligation afterwards. Like I mean, I highly recommend being a demonstrator. I love it. This week happens to be our convention, and I'm so looking forward to it. I look forward to it maybe just a smidge more when they're in person. But even the virtual ones are amazing, and I am just so excited this week. So this is the perfect timing to, for me to rave about why it's so great to be a demonstrator. But I'll try to temper my enthusiasm so you can see how this could possibly work for you. So speaking of temper tantrums, Facebook appears to be having a temper tantrum as well. It is... Um, Flagging all of anything that has certain Stampin' Up! links in it as spam. And this is for like every demonstrator in Canada, which is about 5,000 people, in case you were ever wondering. Um, and pulling those posts. So my original poster that I had and my post that I was going to put up today and my, hey, you know, I can't use any of those because they'll all just get pulled. But basically this site, which is in the comments, seems to be working. Now that's just my like landing page for my site. So if you go on there, you can click store, you can click about me, there's various different things, but you can also click the option to join. So this is the site, that's what you do. And, and look at that, I got so good at Canva, and then now, handwriting. Good thing I have neat handwriting. All right, so let's just talk savings, because already <laughs> I can feel the camera shaking more, and I really don't want to make you guys nauseous, because that's certainly not going to be encouraging for you. Okay, so... Here's how the starter kit works. You get to pick $165 worth of anything you want. Sorry, and I, you know what I just realized? I'm going to, uh, I have no idea how though. Ooh. Swipe left to reveal comments. Sorry, I'm just trying to all of a sudden see if there's comments so I could maybe answer questions as I go, but can't make them show up. Nope, can't make them show up. All right, well, we're just gonna have to wing it. Okay, so you get to order $165 worth of whatever you choose, and you pay $100 flat rate. And I mean $100 flat rate. One of the best reasons for doing this is you don't have to pay any GST or any shipping costs. Now, if that alone isn't enough of a reason, woohoo. So, you can pick whatever you want. I've come up with three samples of things that might help you, just to give you an idea of what I mean and to start showing you just what the value of this is. When you order the starter kit, because the intention is that, um, or one of the intentions is that you're going to 
use it as a business. I was trying to do my fancy, move this thing over. Ah, reflection. We're learning as we go because this was certainly not how I intended to do this today. So here's two things that you get. The Paper Pumpkin Kit is only a North American thing because Paper Pumpkin is a subscription program that's only available in North America. But lucky for us, we get a free kit in each starter kit. And it's just something current, like something, or not current, something recent. Um, and it's just random, whatever goes in there. Now, Paper Pumpkin Kit is worth $31.50. If you were to subscribe, the kit itself, I want to say is 23 or 25 um, can't do the math all of a sudden. The shipping is $8. It comes by uh, a courier delivered right to your doorstep. And then there's a bit of GST on it. So the paper pumpkin value is $31.50. So in all of these three samples, consider that on top of that, you're getting a $31 kit to go with it. You're also getting this list of business supplies. Um, and I gave you just an idea of what's in there. So you get some catalogs and some brochures. One of the brochures is for paper pumpkin. One's some beginner stamping. Ones to join in case somebody else decides they want to join too. You can tell them how. There's some invites. There's some handy folders that you can use for all sorts of things. And some forms and envelopes. Now those all add up if you had to just buy those on your own to just over $53. So right there is almost $90. Free when you buy the starter kit. So keep that in mind. Oops, as Tracy knocks everything over. That that's included. Now for those who are not familiar with Paper Pumpkin... And this is really hard to keep adjusting where I'm sitting here. Um, this is a paper pumpkin kit. So once a month you get it. You don't know what's in it ahead of time. They have started doing like little teasers and stuff. Um, in this case, this is one from, and I happen to remember it actually now. It's from June because this the pictures of this kit released on the day I retired. And funny enough, it's called The Adventure Begins and it's all forestry related. So look at that. So it comes with very cool instructions. Like, look at the details telling you exactly how to put your cards together. It comes with all the paper products you need to make the cards, envelopes, whatever you need. They're all different, so this just is one example. It comes with a stamp set. When you first order, your first kit will come with a block, and then all the stamp sets after that fit that block. And it comes with an ink spot. And each month is a different ink spot, um, so you'll never have a repeat. But what you'll get with your starter kit is just one of these. But like I said, it's nice, and if you want to... If you want to get other people to join you in the fun of Paper Pumpkin or you want to find subscribers because that's a good way to start building your business, it's nice to have one of these kits as a starting point. So, like I said, every one of these options I give you, you get this. I'm just going to try not to make a big mess. I'm going to save that for later. Might need that later. Okay, so my first sample is pretty simple. This is the new stamp and cut in a boss machine, or as I like to call it, the big shot. No, it's not called that anymore, the stamp and cut in a boss machine. Because <laughs> that's what I say just about every time. Because the old one used to be called the big shot. So this machine, this is what you get when you order just the machine. So it's the machine. It comes with all the plates you need to get started. And I put brand new plates on just for you. So you wouldn't see my hacked up ones that I've been using for a while. Uh, so the, the trick with the stamp and cut machine is depending what on you're cutting depends on what sandwich you make. So all these different things make the layers. So you have your base plate and there's another die one. When you're cutting dies, you're generally making some combination of this with these two clear plates. And then depending on your embossing folder, you'll switch out one or more of these plates and add this. So all of these plates and this machine, which is awesome, all come together. And the new one fold up so they, they store away nice. Okay, so this machine, move that over there. Oh, I might need that later. I'll put that there anyway. Okay, so this machine costs, I'm really sorry for the motion sickness, everyone. Uh, this machine costs $163. Shipping is 10%, tax is 5% in Alberta. I should have wrote that in. I, now that I just said it, I thought of it. I should put that in there. These are all Alberta prices. Um, so if you could just go buy this machine, it would cost you $188.27. Now, if you buy this with the starter kit promotion, because it is under the 165, you can be a little bit under. I try to get exactly like I could, if you, if you want to do this, you, you show me a list and we'll see if we can't figure out a way to get exactly 165 or spend every single penny of it. But it is okay to be a little bit under. You just can't go over. So if your order comes to 165.50, the, the system will not accept it. Cannot go over 165, can be just under. 
But let's say we're using the same machine. So I'm buying the stamp and cut emboss machine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get this machine and all the plates like I just showed you. And I'm gonna get my paper pumpkin and I'm gonna get my stack of, of uh, business supplies. And like I said, even if you're not doing the business, those catalogs and stuff, family and friends, there's ways to help other people pay your minimums and keep you being a demonstrator. Or even just have one really good like whoo, one big event mini mat. So yeah. Start okay, hundred bucks flat. There's no shipping, there's no tax, it's a hundred dollars. So this machine, instead of paying $188.27 for, you pay $100 for, plus you get some extras. That alone, you just saved $88 on the machine. Plus you're getting almost $90 worth of extra stuff. Okay, I could probably stop there, right? Come on. <laughs> Whichever number you pick, that's amazing. Ooh, apologies for the chair on the slate floor. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, here's my next pile of supplies. Now, what I did with this one is because COVID seems to be dragging on a little longer than we'd all like, um, you might have to be doing a little more crafting at home and maybe you don't have all the supplies you want. Maybe you're new and just getting into paper crafting and you want some basic tools. Now, if you ask me, I've, I've been doing this for 10 years now, and somebody said, bare minimum, what's the first stuff you need to get? <laughs> first off, that would be a really hard question because if you saw my craft room, you would realize that everything is the answer to that. The answer to what do you need to get? Everything, because it's just so much fun. But if I really had to, and I really did have to think about this to figure out what I, like what would be the bare minimum tools of the trade that you needed, this is what I came up with. So this is our stamp and trimmer, which is what it's called, and I have it upside down, but basically it uh, has this little arm that folds up, but I'll knock everything over trying, so. It basically has two blades here, you'll notice. So one for embossing, one for cutting, right? So you can use 12 by 12 cardstock, the DSP, anything you want. So this will cut your paper and this will score your paper. Very, very good quality. Um, the original ones we had, I found didn't, didn't work as well as the cardstock, but this new model, are they on the same blade? Or, I don't know, I think they came out a year and a half ago, two years ago. I've been using the same one. The scoring blade lasts, I think, forever. Um, but yeah, to be able to cut your paper and make all sorts of different projects, absolutely. Uh, if I was going to make a ton of uh, B projects or do like lots of cardstock scoring, I like the scoring table. But for the beginner crafter or for probably the average crafter if you're just making cards, this thing here is going to save you so much time. Um, I've got the Stampin' Pierce mat. That's this. It does help with certain like technique that you actually you know that you involve seriously but this little cushion mat is what you need to put under your stamps if you're using the photopolymer and it's a fairly big image especially if it's a small sentiment maybe not but for the bigger ones you definitely want something so that's the stamp and pierce mat uh, i'm going to do these in random order just so i don't knock them all over the table this is uh the stamp and scrubby or sorry stamp and sammy and this is a new one Usually I cut them in half because they're a little bit big. But you get this wet with water, and you may have noticed in one of my other videos, and they get very grungy <laughs> very quickly. But you can like sort of, you know, dab your stamps on the paper and then use this to wash it off. So this is a much better option than going through tons and tons of, of uh, wipes and putting them in the landfill. Plus it's really handy if you get like the stamp or something where you don't actually want to be pulling the stamps off. This is just like a really good chamois. The ink absorbs into it. It, uh, and it doesn't transfer back onto you or your fingers. Baby wipes, my fingers end up totally covered in ink. So stamp and chamois. Then I put some blocks here. <clears throat> now I picked three blocks. This is a D block. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wasn't even anywhere close to the blocks. This is a D block. So this is a size you need for paper pumpkin, but it's also a very good size for a, the majority of stamps. Like this is probably the one I use the most. I actually have five of these blocks because if I'm setting up doing a whole bunch of stuff and I don't want to keep moving my stamps, or if I have several stamps going at a class, this is the one I use the most. So automatically, totally get the D block. Then, uh, I think this is C and I is what I wrote down. So these are smaller blocks. Depending on, there's certain stamp sets where there's a really big image in it and you'll need a bigger stamp block than this. So you might have to customize that. There's also very small stamps. So I, I personally think that you have better chance of not fudging your stamp and getting a little halo or rocking it too much if your stamp is close to your block size. 
Now I have 20 some plus blocks. I have two of each size. Oops, <laughs> thing in the wrong spot there, sorry. Um, so I have at least two of each block. And then like I said, I think I've got about five of the Ds or more. So yes, eventually you might build up. And if you buy a specific stamp set later down the road, you might need a specific one. But to get you started on most stamp sets, which is this one, the smaller ones, and this is not the smallest, this is the second smallest, and ones that are longer for maybe a sentiment. I think these are three good blocks to start with. You need to have some scissors, and these are awesome snips. Now you might have scissors at home and you might wanna replace something else, but these are designed to actually snip. So there's lots of pressure on the tips of these, so they cut really well. So if you're not gonna have punches and die cuts and stuff, these scissors are awesome. Bone folders, which is for creasing your paper and stuff. And at first I never really used it very much and I never had one, but then, I mean, I always had one, I guess, but I never really had it like on the table near me. I was like, hey, whatever. Uh, for 3D items, boxes and stuff, you really need one. But I also, after a few times of like using my thumbnail and running my thumbnail down or something and smudging what I was working on or having ink on my finger and dragging it across my paper, I decided to use a bone folder. And now that I do, it's, I use it all the time and I much prefer it. This is our, <laughs> this is what I call your pick your nose tool. And it is not at all what it's called. It is called your take your pick tool. But see, once you get something stuck in your head and then you can't get it out. So doing this all one handed, let's see how well I do. So one end has a spatula. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. And, woo, um, a piercing. So this is good for lifting up. You can do piercing patterns. This is good for lifting up embellishments, paste. There's all sorts of things. I'm not gonna push my luck and try to put that back in. And then on the other end, there is a little putty end. And this is awesome for picking up sequins, small pieces of paper, for adjusting things, for shifting things in your punch. There's so many uses for this thing. So that's a take your pick tool. Uh, and then we have some adhesives, dimensionals. I love dimensionals, I put dimensionals on everything. Um, so these are the like the puffy 3D double-sided, good for everything. Um, you need an adhesive for 3D projects or for if you get too many layers or too heavy of stuff. Um, I love tear and tape, but I've noticed that more people use liquid glue than tear and tape. It's a little more forgiving, gives you a little more time to move. So I would suggest that probably liquid glue is maybe a good starting point. Glue dots, because everything is better with glue dots. <laughs> I use these probably more than anything else. Um, the stamp and seal, which is two-sided tape, which comes out. Ooh, I'm trying to do this without making y'all sick. Uh, this is a, this is great for laying down your layers and bigger pieces. And then the silicone mat, which I always have underneath me. I use it to, if I'm stamping, it'll go off to the side because you could just use your little wipe and just wipe it off or run it under water in the sink. So this is an amazing amount. This is like, you can do so many projects with this and push that out of my way a little bit. And this is like, I mean, maybe it's a starter kit plus, but I mean, this is so much stuff that you can get. Now, oh, there's all of them right there. And I got so excited that I could get so much stuff that I, I didn't actually do it. There, there you go. A very good job of getting them all in one line. So this stuff all together, if you were just to buy it, would cost you $163.75. So add on the shipping, add on the tax, $189.14. Now, this is quite the pile of stuff. And, and I, I would, even if you couldn't get it on sale, I would say, this is what you need. This is like great, but why not buy it when you can pay $100, right? Flat rate, $100. You throw in the business pack, you throw in the stamping kit, you don't pay anything extra for those, $100, no shipping, no tax. There you go, you saved almost 90 bucks buying this stuff. And you know, I know in my head it makes it, I know it doesn't, it's, the math doesn't track, but somehow in my head I think, well, you have, I mean, how can you not spend $100? Right off the bat, you're saving $90. That's $90 you could use for the $100. <laughs> See? Somehow I don't think that math tracks. <laughs> but in my head, it does. All right. Paper pumpkin kit. I got this going. Last thing I'm going to show you. Maybe you do have a bunch of stuff at home. Maybe you just have a project you want to do. Oops. Um, maybe you just want to get more stuff for a really good price. Because the thing with the starter kit is, is you can buy it and then do nothing, and a few months later, you can buy the starter kit again. 
So maybe you've bought it in the past. Maybe you've been a demonstrator. Like I said, maybe you're just a really good hobbyist and you have lots of stuff at home and you just like a deal. Well, this will get you a deal because what this will get you is this pile of stuff. And I'm going to show you, I wasn't going to show you specific stuff and then I decided, no, it's, it's a better visual if I actually show you what I mean. This pile of stuff here will make about 40 cards. And the reason I say 40 cards, it will make probably more than that, is because a pack of envelopes, which I threw in here, has 40 envelopes in it. So that's why I say 40. But what we've got in this pile is some, some of the white cardstock. And I picked the thick stuff because it makes for better card bases on the thick. You can use the regular um, weight stuff, but it just works a lot better with the thick. Then I picked a color. I like red, but it happened to work for just being um, add a, a bit of punch to the color. Um, this is Whisper White. Now there's a whole lot of sheets in here. And this is going to be used for inserts in the middle, for uh, stamping images and cutting them out, for doing your labels with your sentiments, cutting strips, whatever you want. So this will likely go last you way longer than just your first 40 cards. But you basically have white for card bases, colored for card bases, white for elements of it, plus you can use this red for elements of it. And then you pick a package of DSP. So that's our design your series paper. Now I just tried to keep it simple. Um, here, I'll show you my, my top tip. Here's what I've just started doing with my designer paper. When I first get it, I, I slice the top open instead of lifting up this little flap because this little flap has an adhesive on it. And without a doubt, every time I stick that adhesive to a piece of designer paper and rip it. So I've stopped doing that. And then totally, totally, because I have done this so many times, I draw an arrow on it. So that when I pick the piece of paper up, I see what side the opening is, so I quit dumping all of the paper on the floor. So there's Tracy's tip for how not to get frustrated with your DSP, in case you were wondering what that big arrow was. So this is just brights. This is just a collection of all the colors in the bright section. That's, and you'll notice on it that it lists all the colors in here. Now all our designer paper does that. This is, happens to be brights, but if you pick the pack of Christmas paper, kind of almost sounds like a, like a tongue twister. Pick a pack of pick, pick a pack of Christmas paper. Um, so, if you pick wh whatever it was, it would also tell you what colors are in it. Now, in this case, I picked a red that's in here, so it does go together. Um, they don't have to. You just pick whatever works for you. In this case, this works for me. Um, there are so many different, and I put the the price I used for this. I used because most of the packs of paper are the same price. Colored paper, same price. The white papers are a little bit different because they have different numbers of sheets in them, but like all the colored papers, same number of sheets, same price. Then there's ribbon and embellishments. Now, this is for when you're finishing off your card. And I'm, I, I just picked two that I happen to really like. I like twine. I like the ribbon, but I like twine way better. And we now have a five pack of twine. Um, embellishments, there's so many of them. Um, I happen to have my handy dandy catalog. So look at the embellishments. There's that many different choices. Oops. Plus there's this one, this old school technology, man. Whew. I appreciate my computer more and more. So look at all the options you have. These are one of my favorites. Side note, hippie flowers, as I like to call them. Um, and then look at all the different ribbons you can get and twines and, and cords and stuff. So there's any number of ones to pick in there. I just picked two to show you that um, there's money in the starter kit, like in this amount to get them and just pick ones that work for you. I like these because you can tie them into bows, tie them into knots. If you're making cards that you want to be a little less frilly, um, that works too. Oh, look, the comments all of a sudden started popping up. So hello, Coral, I think that says, and Tamara, it's starting to scroll by. And yes, uh, Tamara, watch two lives at once. See what that does for your brain power. Um, okay, so then we also have a punch. Now this is the rectangle postage punch, which I absolutely love. Um, there's lots of punches in there. Let's see if I can do that fast enough. Um, the thing with the punches is it is again, a lot of personal taste on the punches. I have, you know, it's funny cause I have, I have tabs on here. Um, most of the punches run about the same price. Lots of options. Again, it is kind of personal taste, but if you're just starting out and you're getting some really basic stuff, this tailored punch, and this rectangle punch here, let's say, um, you can use those and just punch out DSP 
and make a pattern with them, or you can stamp images and punch them out and make a pattern with them. And so some of them work a lot better and have a lot more like, um, like very more varied use you can use with them. Some of them are awesome. And I mean, if you happen to be doing a, a, a theme where you need the whale and the whale's perfect. And I mean, you can stamp a sentiment in the whale. It doesn't always have to be like a picture of him uh, <laughs> on each device. Um, then, then buy that one if that's the project you're doing. But if you want just general cards, um, something like this that you can use as a label, but you could also punch out and use to make a bunch of different cards out of is, is a good idea. Um, if you have a, if you already have a die cut machine, then punches are still awesome, but maybe you want to just order, um, some more dies to make labels. But you want something. Um, if you have the trimmer or some kind of cutter, you can make strips and squares and rectangles and really easily, um, so labels just give you a little more variety. Now, I picked a stamp set. Um, the one I picked happens to be one of the more expensive ones. This stamp set is $30. But one of the reasons I picked it is because it's got images and sentiments in it. It's got a bunch of different options for sentiments. And I'm guessing that between the cookie, the coffees, the cocktails, and the chocolate, you will find something that works for whoever you're making your card for. <laughs> and these are fairly simple images to cut out by hand as well. It does come if you wanted to... Uh, switch out some of the different elements and go for it as a bundle. If you already had a die cut machine at home, it does come with dies. So you could like, you know, fix your math and actually get the dies for it. But if you didn't want to, and you just got the stamp set, these images are really quite easy to cut out by hand and, or just stamp on the background. And uh, look at how many different options you have for sediments, right? And there's just, like I said, I'm pretty sure you can make it work. And then, <laughs> oh, my, my ink is making a break for it. Okay. And then the final thing I added on was a couple ink pads. Now, I was gonna pick a red ink pad and then I'm like, no, look at there's coffee and there's chocolates and there's cookies. So I thought a brown ink pad might be a good idea. Several browns you can pick. I picked early espresso because I like it. Uh, and then I picked a black ink pad because I think you can't go wrong with black. If you have other coloring tools at home, uh, you can use that even just for sentiments. It's pretty much one of the neutrals, works for everything. So with all of this stuff here, you're going to make yourself at least 40 cards. I mean, there is stuff galore there. Um, now, oh, there's my little piece of paper. I was going to say I lost my little piece of paper. So I added all this stuff up, and it added up again to $163. So you'll notice that happens to be the same price as the die cut machine but that was just total fluke. So, 188.27 or 100, which one are you gonna pick? Personally, I say pick the $100 one, because again, you save 88.27, that's almost $100 you have to spend. Tracy Bath, woohoo. So there you go. Number one benefit of the, of the starter kit, savings. <laughs> um, I am going to uh, send out an invite on our Wednesday, in my Wednesday newsletter. So if you, if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, um, I'll send that. Actually, I'll post that link afterwards because I didn't post it beforehand, but I'll post the link again to subscribe. And in there is going to be an invite for a Zoom meeting on Sunday to have the discussion. So you can ask very specific questions. You can ask questions about which products to get or questions about what to do or questions about any of the other lives I do this week. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a live each day this week. Um, some of them might be during the convention. Some of them will be before. And I'm going to hit all the different elements of the starter kit or being a demo and just information you need to know so that you're not intimidated by this process. Yes, the starter kit is what demonstrators buy when they start being a demonstrator. But there is as many items as you can choose to put in your starter kit. There's probably that many different ways you can run your business. Not run your business, just get a discount, just get a one-time deal. There's so many different ways this all works that I'm going to do my best to let you know all those options so you can zone in on the one that works for you. So, day one, savings. Minimum saving on the product you're getting is $90.00. Plus, or it's about $90, plus you're getting almost $90 worth of stuff. So for $100, you're getting $280, just shy of $300 worth of stuff, and there's no tax and no shipping. 
$100 flat rate. There you go, folks. Simple math. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me and putting up with my very low tech and hopefully not too, too shaky. Um, <laughs> self cameramanning live today. Um, I'm hoping I will have my computer uh, over its temper tantrum by tomorrow and tomorrow's will go a little bit smoother. Plus, I got Technique Tuesday tomorrow. Join me then. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Have a great night. Bye.